Welcome, everyone. Hey, special, special shout out and a huge thank you to everyone who supports this channel. We have finally hit small drum roll, please. 100 subscribers that is crazy. Literally could not have done that without all of you. Honestly, with this special news also comes actually a new podcast playlist that I'm actually in the process of creating, um, which will focus attention on Broadway theaters and theaters across the US. So stay tuned as I will actually reveal more information as I get closer to unveiling it. Today, however, I welcome you to join us as we take a very, very, and I mean very short but sweet look into the thrilling world of Jekyll and Hyde, a musical that explores the duality of human nature. Jekyll and Hyde is a 1990 musical loosely based on the 1886 novel The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson, with a book by Leslie Brucusi and music and lyrics by Frank Wildhorn. In May of 1990, Jekyll and Hyde was first presented at the Alley Theater in Houston, Texas, where it broke box office records, played to sold-out houses, and won acclaim from critics leading to the run being extended twice before closing in July of that year. Now, the cast starred actor, director, and musical theater historian Chuck Wagner, actress and opera singer Rebecca Spencer, and Tony nominee Linda Etter. After an almost three-year hiatus, the show would actually return to Houston for a limited engagement in January of 1995 before transferring to Seattle's Fifth Avenue Theater in February of that year. Due to the success of the run, the musical would actually open on Broadway at the Plymouth Theater, which today is known as the Gerald Schoenfeld Theater, in March of 1997, running for 1,543 performances. The cast at the time starred Tony nominee Robert Caccioli, Tony nominee Linda Etter, reprising her role from the Houston production, and future Tony-nominated actress Christiane Knoll. The run on Broadway has seen the likes of Emmy Award nominee Jack Wagner, the frontman of the hard rock band Skid Row, Mr. Sebastian Bach, and famous Baywatch lead actor David Hasselhoff. The musical played an almost four-year run, becoming the longest-running show in the history of the Plymouth Theater. And in 2000, the Broadway production was filmed live at the Plymouth Theater, becoming the only official video recording of the musical that exists in its entirety. By April of 2013, 16 years after its original run on Broadway, the musical of Good and Evil would return in its first revival at the Marquee Theater, starring sixth place finalist on the fourth season of American Idol, Mr. Constantine Maroulis, Canadian singer-songwriter and eight-time Juno Award nominee, Deborah Cox, singer and stage actress, Tia Wicks, and the original voice of Gaston in Disney's animated film, Beauty and the Beast, Richard White. Now, performance rights have since become available in the U.S. and the U.K. following the closure of the Broadway production, leading to many regional productions being produced each year. 30 international productions have also been staged over the years, which have also translated the book and the score into many many different languages well folks like i said very 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 short but sweet look into jekyll and hyde uh, the show reminds us that the line between good and evil can often be blurry making us also question our own inner struggles and the choices we make remember the darkness can lurk within us all the question is are you strong enough to resist it